Professor Barrett, Amy Bella here. So for my biography project, I chose t to talk about William Carey, partly because that was what we talked about in the audio this week, and also because it made an impression on me when they talked about how he did not want to be written about, and he w wanted the focus to be on God, and it made an impression on me. So I got my information from an ebook, and it's supplemented by William Carey's organization, or the organization for William Carey that made a website. And I've given, or I'm going to put the link to these in with the link to my video. So, yeah, I'll start off talking about his general biography. And then I'll talk about how these things that he did affected Baptist thought. So he was born on the 17th of August in 1761 in Northampton, England. And as a young child, he, he did some reading. And in my ebook, it says that he seemed to avoid reading religious books, and he liked to read fiction. And it happened that he read Pilgrim's Progress somewhat by accident. He didn't fully realize the spiritual significance of it at the time, but he did later on, it seems. So uh, from age 16 to 28, he was a shoemaker, so he had an apprenticeship starting at age 16. And uh, one of the things that happened um, seemingly before he was 18, he um, he was charged with collecting the donations from other tradesmen to give to his master. And while he was out, he decides to run an errand for himself. And he was paying for his things, but found that one of his own shillings was fake. And he decided to use one of his masters. So he essentially stole. And it, this is talked about in the audio, but the audio doesn't seem to talk about um, the prayer he talks about in the letter he wrote. And he seemed very ashamed of this, but he said that he prayed to God to help him get away with the theft. And uh, if he did, he would never do it again. But of course, this didn't happen. And uh, he seems to think that it was fortunate when he talked about it in his letter that he was instead reported by one of the other apprentices and uh, he was publicly shamed, essentially. And this, the significance of this was, it seems to uh, make him realize his own sinfulness, and it makes people appreciate grace more after they know what the consequences will really be like. So, it was after this that he attended a worship service, and the, the preacher talked about giving our lives over to Christ entirely and serving entirely. And uh, at this point, he became purged of himself, and he had conviction to start serve Christ the way the preacher said. And he was formerly a Calvinist. After this, he became a Baptist. And uh, from the start, he was very zealous about preaching the word, and it made an impression on people, and there's letters written about it. And uh, later on, he started studying foreign languages, and he had a real gift for it. He became a professor at a university as well. In 1792, which would make him about 30, he founded the Baptist Missionary Society. And his mission to India began in 1794. For In India, he translated the Bible in more than 10 languages, or the dialects in India and planted churches there, and he also planted schools in the villages, and also helped with agriculture, and he wanted to help them become self-sufficient, and that was the spirit of his missionary journeys. Um, and that's some of his accomplish accomplishments in a nutshell, and uh, his death occurred in 1835. So. The way some of these things that I've already talked about affected Baptist thought was, um, in part, this is also talked about in the audio, so it's kind of a repeat, but it's, it's talked about in other places. He, um, 
encountered some of the thoughts during the time that were circulating was that the apostolic power was dead, and uh, international missions could not happen unless there was another Pentecost that would enable people to speak in foreign tongues without having studied them. And um, it's in, in my ebook. It talks about the general doubt of people being able to translate the Bible in so many languages, especially someone like him who had been a cobbler before that. But he did it anyway, and he started church planting, which I believe is discussed in the Hammett book. is very important to Baptists. So um, he was kind of. The father of church planting in foreign missions, and、uh, one of his letters, in one of his letters, he says that he believed schools to be one of the best ways of, quote, civilizing people, end quote, and、um, I believe that this is kind of contributes to the spirit of helping people abroad become self-sufficient in the same way that church planting is that they should become self-sufficient and be able to minister to each other as well. And the same thing with helping them with ag- agriculture, which was also one of his passions. And those are some of the biggest con- contributions he's had to Baptist thought. So there is William Carey,、uh, one of, I guess, a name that sometimes passes into obscurity as I read, who is actually kind of the father of Baptist missions. So that's him. In Seven minutes.